Hello and welcome to our Great Black Artist series. I'm your instructor, Melvin Butler, or Baba Melvin. Peace everyone. Hope everyone's doing great. Today we are be going over shape and form. This is continuation from our last lesson on shape and form. First, let's gather the supplies we're going to need for a studio session. We're going to need white glue, glue sticks, a sketchbook or drawing paper if you do not have a sketchbook, Bristol paper or cardstock paper. These are heavier papers, meaning that they're a little thicker. If you do not have Bristol or cardstock, you can use oat tag or construction paper. If you don't have those things, we can also use cardboard. You're also going to need scissors, pencil, pens if you have it, markers, or crayons, or even colored pencils. You're also going to need some tape. So take a few minutes and gather all those supplies. Let's review what we learned over the last three classes. We've been exploring line, shape, and form. Can you identify the different types of lines that we learned? We used these lines in our abstract line drawing. Here you can see expressive lines, descriptive lines, and also implied lines. Expressive lines, remember, were lines that the artist or an artist uses to express an emotion. They can be bold, they can be gentle and light, they can be really fast lines. These lines help you to create a sense of a feeling in your artwork. There are also descriptive lines. Descriptive lines tell you how about something. They tell you the shape of something, how something's shaped. They can also tell you the texture of something, what something might feel like. There are also implied lines. And again, implied lines are not really lines. They're really just marks that are in a row or create a certain rhythm, as you see here in the dots. Or when two shapes are next to each other, they create a line, as you see where this overlapping happens with this smaller rectangle over this larger square. We also learned about geometric shapes and forms. Up above, you can see examples of that. Geometric shapes are two-dimensional. So the square and the rectangle and even this circle, which is more of a line, are examples of shapes. They can be measured two ways, their height and their width. Geometric forms are three-dimensional. Three-dimensional shapes can be measured three different ways. Their height, their width, and of course how deep, how far back they go into space. Those are geometric shapes and forms. Organic shapes and forms are forms that are a little bit more natural. They have irregular edges. These are examples of organic shapes and forms. Now, organic shapes, just like geometric shapes, are still two-dimensional. You can measure how wide they are and how tall they are, but they do have no depth. Organic forms, however, like this rock, have that added dimension so height, width, and the illusion of depth, how far back they go. Organic shapes can also take the form of a human head. And we learned that last week when we were actually creating our uh, um, Derek Adams side profile drawings. We also talked about a little bit about negative and positive space. What's negative space? Well, negative is space is the shape around an object. So I want you to look at all of these shapes and forms and look at the blue area in the background. That would be an example of negative space. Negative space can also be inside of an object, as you can see here. Even though this line, this brown line, creates the edge of a form, of a shape here, the inside is open. And of course, you can see inside here, there's lots of negative space around these shapes and forms. 
Today we're going to go a step further and we're going to learn a little bit about the expressive qualities of shapes and forms. We're going to do that by looking at a great black artist. This great black artist, Leroy Clark, was born on November 7, 1938. He is a master artist, a poet, a lecturer, a philosopher, and an Orisha leader. He was born in Belmont, Trinidad, and Tobago. His artwork expresses ideas about the lives of people across the African diaspora. That is, people and black people are people of African descent that live all across the world. Let's explore one of his paintings. Leroy Clark uh, created this painting titled Now in 1970. It's oil on canvas and is quite large, 48 by 72 inches. Take a moment and observe the painting. What do you see? When we observe paintings, remember we're trying to pick out the elements of the painting, perhaps even talk about the elements of, of art, such as line, shape, form, color, texture. And we're also trying to um, think about why the artist used those elements in the way that they did. We we're thinking about the design of it as well. In this painting we see a mass figure in the center and this figure is actually standing next to a woman holding a child. Two large black hands, one clutching a broken chain and the other making a black fist, a symbol of black empowerment, dominate the upper left hand corner. There are smaller more abstract figures on the bottom but they're really abstract. You can barely make out their faces. Baba Clark uses these strong, really bold, energetic lines and outlines and intense, contrasting colors. He's painted a really complex, abstract composition. Remember, abstract things or abstract forms and shapes are forms and shapes that can resemble things from real life but they're not actually painted to look exactly like those things. We learned about that in our abstract drawing by Julie uh, Metaru. The shapes and forms are also overlapping and are geometric and closed. We talked a little bit about that a second ago when we look at our shapes. Closed shapes are forms and shapes that have very few or no openings. When you look at this painting, we can't really see past the figures that are in front of us. We can see above them to the red sky and the yellow sun up, um, behind the chain, but we really can't see and penetrate past these figures that are in front of us. Again, closed shapes and forms have very few or no openings. They basically have zero negative shapes. Consider what you know about the Black Empowerment Movement of the 1970s. And if you don't know much about the Black Empowerment Movement of the 1970s, I want you to go and research that. It's a really interesting and important period of um, African American and, of course, African history uh, during the world. Leroy Clark was creating artwork during that time, during the 1960s and 70s as well. I want you to also think about what ideas this artist was trying to express about the family and specifically about the black family in the United States at the time. Give that a second. Think about it. Let's look at the things in the picture. We're going to also look at the work of another great art black artist today. Her name is Bisa Butler. Bisa Butler is a great black artist who masterfully uses quilt and fiber to quilt uh, portraits and designs depicting African-American and African lives. 
Lisa Butler was born in Orange, New Jersey. Lisa Butler uses historical photographs as well as photos of her own family. She enlarges photos, that means make them a little bit larger, larger than life size or about life size, and then sketches over these photos, selecting areas of light and dark. Then she begins choosing fabrics, layering them according to color and lightness and darkness, and then stitching them together to create the figure with a sewing machine. At the end, the stitched portrait is layered on top of a soft batting material. If you've ever felt a quilt, you know that the things inside of it, that soft uh, material that's inside is called batting. And a backing fabric is put on the back. After which, a repeated pattern of sketches is applied to all of the layers to hold them together. One quilt can take hours and hours to complete. Here we have a painting, or actually I should say a quilting, of Visa Butler's The Warmth of Other Suns, titled after a book by the same name, The Warmth of Other Suns. That book is about the migration, the great migration of African Americans from the American South to the American North. This painting was completed in 2020, and it is made out of cotton, silk, wool, and velvet. Now, what do you see? Take a second and see what you can find here. Here we see seven figures standing before us, clothed in what looks like traditional African textiles. We can see that by the designs on their clothing. The youngest child at the center is flanked by his two sisters on either side, followed by their mother and father on the left side and what could be their grandparents on the right side. Bisa Butler's Warmth of Other Sons is an example of open shapes and forms. Though the figures are overlapping, we can see areas of openings between them. Look between their arms, look between the spaces between the figures. We can see right past them to the background. Bisa Butler's tapestries and figures seem to float on this red space. Within this red environment. Again, even though the warmth of other suns does include overlapping as a technique in design, just as the painting now, the scale of these figures is a bit smaller and it allows the viewer to, to look past the family and around the family. What do you think Bisa Butler is expressing about the fat black family in this picture? If you would like to see more information or hear Bisa Butler talking about her work, you can definitely watch this video, Quilting for the Culture, Bisa Butler. It is very informative and you can find it on YouTube. I want you to compare and contrast these two pieces of artwork, Leroy Clark's Now and Bisa Butler's The Warmth of Other Suns. How do the ideas and feelings of the paintings now compared to the ideas of the textile, the warmth of other suns. What ideas about the black family do you think these artists are trying to express? Take a second and write that down. Grab yourself a piece of paper. These things are gonna actually gonna help us during our art studio session. Again, what ideas about the black family do you think these artists are expressing? I want you to explain your answers the best you can on a sheet of paper, perhaps in your sketchbook. Why did the artist use these either organic forms or geometric forms? Remember, geometric forms like you see in the painting now are going to make you feel a certain way because they express a different emotion or idea. And more organic forms 
such as the ones you see in the warmth of other suns, are going to also make you feel a different way. Why did the artist use these forms? Also, why did the artist use either a closed or open shapes? And we know that people and families function best when they're supported by a larger community. You probably are supported by your parents or supported by someone in your family. The larger communities are, they function best when they're committed to achieving a common goal. Like a team. Families are like teams as well. This usually happens when each member of the team has a unique role. They're individual, but they're united in following a certain rule or certain certain code or a code of behavior in order to achieve a goal. Your family, for example, might agree to eat a plant-based diet because that's more healthy. You might also agree as a family to consistent regular exercise. Or you may agree as a family, your parents and your grandparents, aunts and uncles, may agree to follow a certain African spiritual tradition. Or simply discuss ways in which non-white people or black people or people of African descent can empower themselves within a system of racism or white supremacy. I want you to think about all those things. And at the same time, I want you to ask yourself, how will your artwork express ideas about your family and your family's code or the ideas that are important to you and your family? I want you to select one of the artworks that we just viewed now or the warmth of other suns. And I would like for you to compare and contrast these. And I want you to also think about for yourself about the placement of figures within each one of these compositions. Think about where the parents are placed. Think about where the children are placed. Think about where you would be placed if you were describing or depicting your own family. What place should your elders have? Your elders are those grandparents or your aunts, your uncles, your great aunts, great uncles, your great cousins, your mother and your father. What place should they have? How would you represent this person or these people? Would they be the largest shapes and forms? What shapes and forms would they take? Where would you be in relationship to the rest of your family? What kind of shapes and forms would represent and define you? What symbols, if any, would you use? If you look at both of these uh, compositions, you see that both of the artists use different types of forms and symbols, and they included them in different ways in the composition. Bisa Butler is using these forms and using these decorative textiles on the patterns, on the actual patterns of the clothing that these figures are wearing, and even on their flesh to create a more realistic picture, while Leroy Clark is abstracting things and using more closed geometric shapes, harder shapes for his picture. What symbols and forms would you use to describe